when you started your career back in uh, 2003 right like how certain or sure were you that you know you want to just enter the gaming industry and uh, for you it started as a 3d modeler so a like how did you gain that skill set uh, b how did you decide that you know you want to join this uh, gaming company we will be working as a 3d modeler and what was the thought process yeah actually uh, um before i was a 3d modeler i was like a mm. carpenter wood carpenter so a totally different industry Okay. Um, because my parents um, said that, you know, I should learn something traditional. And mm. but I was always passionate about uh, making games since since I was 12 years old or whatever. <laughs> and I was always like playing around with it. And after I graduated from being a carpenter, <clears throat> I I sold everything I had, all my, my, my own earnings. And then I started in this industry, like I went to the private college and then mm. I started this college. How difficult or easy was it to for you to break into the, like get the first job after you were done learning? <clears throat> Actually, after I was done learning and studying, I didn't get a job right away. But okay. I was persistent on my own, like I continued improving myself and I made my own, my, improved my reel, my demo reel and send it to different studios and eventually it worked out like uh, one of them gave me a chance and then I just worked my ass off from there so I could could keep staying there as an intern and then I moved up you know slowly moved up <clears throat> got it so uh, there were like three years and seven months where you spent in uh, this first company called Scanline Productions and then eventually you transitioned into your second job and that was in uh, New Zealand, right? So, yes. where are you based out of? Where you start your career, and uh, is it that you move to New Zealand, or are you like, are you based out of New Zealand itself? Oh, like um, I am based in, in Austria. <laughs> okay. And and I wanted to work at Scanline because I heard I have heard of them before, and it's only one hour train ride away from me, from my hometown. Okay. Okay. So I always used to train going back and forth. Okay. It was in Munich. And while while I was at Scanline, you know, after three years, I always wanted to get my dream job at Beta Digital. That was like one of my, my highest aim. And and um, so I went to a conference where mm -hmm. I met one of one of those uh, supervisors mm -hmm. and uh, I presented him my reel. And two months later, I was in New Zealand. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and, and then I moved to New Zealand for five years, I believe. Yeah, <clears throat> we're talking about like 2005 or six era uh, when you moved into moved to New Zealand. So, how was the gaming industry back then? Because if I compare that to India, like it was at very nice stage here in India. There yeah. were like very handful of gaming studios. How was the whole ecosystem there uh, so, in Australia and New Zealand? Yeah. So, so back then it was like um, I wasn't actually in the gaming industry. I wanted to work in the gaming industry, mm -hmm. but I got the jobs in the visual effects industry. So I was first a scanline, mm -hmm. and then Weta Digital worked mm -hmm. on Avatar title. And oh. um, but I always wanted to had a passion for making games, and I wanted to break in the industry. And mm -hmm. I I constantly tried to find a way to to get into the gaming industry. Hmm. And and your break was in Blizzard, I think. Uh, the next yeah. company that you was it, uh, Blizzard was basically my first introduction to the gaming industry. Even okay. though they worked for the cinematics team, <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, so wasn't working directly for the game, but for the mm -hmm. cinematics teams. Mm -hmm. But that kind of did a spark in me, and and after that, I started working on my own game after Blizzard. Okay, got it. So, like, how was the experience in uh, Blizzard? And, like, were you working? Did you go to US or was it a remote job? How was it? Uh, and Blizzard, I was at the US. And um, my, my son was born in New Zealand. And I moved together with my son and my wife to, to, the, to the States. Mm -hmm. But um, we didn't stay there very long because, honestly, we didn't like it there, living in California. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
uh, working for Blizzard was great. They have many, many benefits and everything, but um, I didn't like. I'm used to grow up in a, like a nature place, and mm. Blizzard is in Irvine in south of Los Angeles, and mm. it's basically desert. So if you're not used to that kind of climate, then <laughs> yeah, okay. it was hard for me. <laughs> Okay, got it. And uh, how was it after Blizzard? Because I think you uh, you mentioned that you you were then in Munich, or how was it after Blizzard? At Blizzard, I made a good friend. I uh, met a good friend of mine, uh, Till. Mm-hmm. Which back then, at Blizzard, we already started like creating our own idea mm-hmm. of, of a game, mm-hmm. and um, and. Then I moved back to Austria with my um, with my son and wife, back back to my hometown, and um, and I had to find a job. So I found a job again in the visual effects industry, but I really wanted to work on my own game. So I worked half a year on the visual effects industry again, mm-hmm. and then fully committed to my own game, the first game, okay. the Bug Butcher. <laughs> okay. So, like, what was the first game that you started working on? What kind of game was it? Um, it was a 2D action shooter called The Bug Butcher. <laughs> okay. And it won one of the numerous awards, but it was financially not very successful. So, mm. after that, working on our own game, I started working as a freelancer, as a developer in the gaming industry. Mm. Mm. And now I kind of established myself because um, you know once you once you establish your skills in the industry and people know you, they will ask you again and again for a job. And, and so um, yeah, I'm, I'm keep working as a freelancer. Works very well for me. <clears throat> Got it. Okay, understood. And then uh, I, I'm just going through your LinkedIn. Okay, and uh, I. I can see here that you you also worked in uh, Marvel's The Avenger team. Uh, so that was, again, I'm imagining for cinematics and all, but how was that experience? Okay, what was that? No, no um, um, the, the Avengers was, um, it was a CG supervisor at Scanline. Oh, okay. Uh, and for the movie. And okay. we, we worked on the, um, the CG <laughs> sequences for the What's it called? Uh, when airplanes land, the flight carrier, flight carrier. <laughs> oh, okay, got it. So the bigger yeah. ship that they have. Got yeah, it. yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 We worked on those kind of sequences. <laughs> so this was the same company that you had worked. Uh, the first company where you worked, Scanline. Yes. Or was it a different one? It was. It was the same company, basically. <laughs> oh, okay, got it. They just renamed yeah. themselves to Scanline VFX, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Hmm. And then, like, do you remember, like, where did you meet Mayank for the first time? Uh, I'm assuming Jungle Games. Mayank and the other team, I was already working with them on Eat Me, I believe. Oh, I okay. Yeah. And then Ankush, the owner of um, Jungle Games, yep. uh, he wanted to make their own game, uh, mm. a new game, a new IP. Mm. And we worked on it for a year, but unfortunately, it didn't work out. Um, so that that project got cancelled. Uh, like Ankush is a founder of Jungle Games, right? So uh, yes. you mentioning of a new IP for Jungle itself, or was that a different company? No, there was a new IP for um, for Jungle itself. <laughs> okay, okay, got it. How was it after twenty eighteen till now? Like the past four five years. What all was the key highlights of your career, uh, and uh, how was the experience? So for one, I worked in a VR industry, like a, um, on a VR project for two years. I was also freelancing there, mm. um, mainly as a developer. But um, for me, I, I'm like a, ha- a hybrid version. I'm not like full developer. I'm not full artist. I kind of like doing both of the things. Mm. Um, um, so that was great at that company, but after that VR company, again, I had the spark in me to work on my own game. <laughs> mm. And so three people of us joined together again, uh, um, to work on our own game. And we worked on a mobile title called Sushi Surf. Mm. 
and um, we got an investor that financed that project. Okay, I have like two broad questions in my mind, moving away right. from the timeline. Uh, yeah. A, you started as an artist, right? And then you transitioned into a core, hardcore programming role as a Unity developer. So how did you find time to upscale yourself? Like learn the skill set needed mm. to become a developer? And then mm. uh, how did you score your first few projects there? Mm -hmm. I was always an artist with like a technical interest, I would say. <laughs> Okay. And for the company I worked at uh, for Peter Jackson, when I worked for the, 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 the first Avatar movie, mm. I got this task of, you know, we have to, to build this huge home tree. So I was modeling the, the home tree, this huge tree. And no, back then, no one knew how to do it because we didn't, there was no tools or, or how to create it. So mm. then I was making up my own tools. I was... Uh, starting scripting, very basic scripting in, inside Maya, yeah. and and eventually um, that that scripting I was so passionate about it, it turned out to be like you know oh I can learn this scripting language let's try the programming language and slowly I progressed there and kind of learned it myself. How long were you invested with your own company? And then secondly, how how many games did you build there? Uh, okay, like how long was the journey? Yeah. So for our first game, there was totally um, self-financed, uh, awfully nice studios. There was like mm. two years mm. for us developing the game, um, self-financed. So we, we there was two of us, one artist and the developer was me. And we both went bankrupt. <laughs> we didn't have any cash anymore. <laughs> okay. We just managed to release it somehow and we made a little bit of money back, <laughs> but not all of it. <laughs> <laughs> and did you try to build a company that was purely for uh, like you know like a third party studio for some other company uh, solving their a, problems? You mean like uh, making a service um, service based company developing the game for someone else? Right, right. Yeah, um, we were thinking about it. There's a lot of those studios in China and India, mm. and living cost in China and India is very cheap compared to Europe. Cheap so you can never yeah. keep up with the costs there. If you're studying in Europe, you have to, um, you, you can never keep up with, with those costs. That's impossible. I know there are a few studios out there, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's, it's super competitive and, 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 and hard. If you're based in India where the living costs are cheaper, I guess right. it's possible, but uh, in, in Europe, it's just not an option. <laughs> right. I ever thought of moving to a populated country like us, India or China. <laughs> you could have then managed the finances better, right? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Got it. Cool. So interesting, Rainer. Like I, I really love the like you're still so humbly mentioning all those things, right? Like I'm sure this has been a hell of hell of a journey, like spending 20 years and 20 decades, like two decades in in an industry, like shows you a lot of ups and downs. Uh, plus, you were building your own startup when uh, the the whole world was going through pandemic. So I think like that would have been a an interesting time as well. Like, what were you doing when uh, countries were shut because of pandemic and everything? Like, were you freelancing back then, or still working on awfully nice studios uh, after like during 2020, 2021 phase? I think during the pandemic time. We were already in talks with the investor to mm. uh, finance us our second game, Sushi Surf. Mm. And when the pandemic hit seriously, we already had like the project in, um, um, signed. So mm. we were good for, for for two years of development time. So we didn't have any any problem with the um, pandemic. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it didn't hit us at all. <laughs> Got it. Understood. Yeah. Cool. I think uh, that is it. I don't have uh, more questions. Again, thank you so much for taking out time. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, you know, I'll be drafting a story out of this, like what you just shared, uh, from how you started as a wood car carpenter back in 2001, I think, and then uh, to building awfully, uh, awfully nice studios. <laughs> yeah. journey till uh, 2022 and uh, you know it's really inspiring uh, to see 
someone like who's who's come this long to me and right now you're still humbly saying all these things that you know <laughs> thank you so much for your time okay so thank you bye bye